Doo -doo 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 -doo. Magic for normies. Hi, everybody. Welcome hey, to everybody. Magic for Normies. How's it going out there, friends? Hey, everybody. It's awesome. We've got some people waiting. Um, we're like, I wouldn't really say three minutes late, but like nine o'clock or nine o'clock hit my time and we were like oh crap we got to start the stream <laughs> we better start our we people are waiting yeah. yeah um yeah so hi i'm pixie kitten um this is zuby uh, are you pointing to the right place now I, i've got to practice that for next time for no, sure i think it and this Yes, I am Zuby and my co-host Pixie Kitten. Yes. Um, <laughs> we are here to discuss Magic the Gathering for normies um, because we're casual players. So yeah. let's do it. Um, hey, Baltan. Hey, Muhammad. Hey, How's Baltan. it going, friends? What's up? Uh, nice to see you all again. A normie hey, is never Efren. late, nor are they early. They are right precisely when they mean to. <laughs> All right, Gandalf. We were just like um, building up the anticipation. That's that's why exactly. we're we're just fashionably late. We're not doing we're doing that on purpose. So it's just a part I of think, the persona. And next time I'll wear my wizard robe and hat. <gasps> Ooh, that sounds like fun. <laughs> I'll <laughs> find something. One. I should. Yeah. I should get one. I don't have a wizard robe or hat either, but I have a Robin Hood outfit. You know, we should do a cosplay episode. <gasps> I mean, like, I, I know you've got a Soren outfit and all that. I do. I you know, I should go find, like, a Jace thing or something. Like, like wear, like, Jace? a Jace hood. Oh. Yeah, Jace. I mean, hey. who else could I cosplay as? I mean, Gideon? I'd have to get, like, way skinnier and buff <laughs> to do that. <laughs> we could try it. We'll see. Jace well, is should. kind of annoying, but it's okay. I'll let you have it. Um, well, who else could I even cosplay? What, Dak Faden or Domri Raid or... Zuby the Grey. Like, Zuby the Grey. <laughs> that's Gandalf. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, what are we talking about tonight? We're talking about Corset 21, of course. There have oh, been yeah. a lot of previews out. Um, first, what's been up with you lately, Zuby? What's, how's it going? What's going on in your world? I've been busy as all hell work has been just been insane oh. it's like now that hospitals are starting to i wouldn't say exactly lift everything but now that things are starting to slowly get back to normal across the country in terms of the lockdowns it's um every project that's been put on hold for the past two and a half three months has now suddenly hey we need to get it done right now and i'm all like oh fuck me <laughs> yeah that does not sound like fun um, no, yeah. but it, um, it, it's it's a little exhausting right I'm now. I'm sure. Um, I saw that you didn't have any EDH streams this week. I figured you were really busy yeah. with work, so it happens. Yeah, it, it, it happens, and I won't do another one until next Saturday because next week starts the where I got to start working late again like oh, I was no. before. So you're I not know. doing any this coming Saturday? No, 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 no. It's, so um, it will my, be the next. Yeah, the next Saturday. It's my little girl's birthday tomorrow. And oh. so she's turning 11. Wow. And, um, I know. Not so little uh, anymore. You got a preteen on your hands. Oh, my God. I know. Oh, my God. Mm. <laughs> she is. Oh, it's that it's that preteen attitude yeah. that um, she's the sweetest person until she's just like. Like, excuse me, what did you just say? <laughs> well, happy happy birthday to your daughter tomorrow. I will let her know that even the chat is saying happy birthday to her. Aww. Yeah, so then we're we're doing just a we're spending time as just the four of us as a family tomorrow. And then Saturday we're gonna have a little party. Okay. And all that, so. Nice. Um, being responsibly socially distant, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, it's we're only gonna have um a few people over yeah. really. I'm just giving you a hard time. That's fine. That I sounds mean, it, like fun. Well well, first of all, even um even if it wasn't all social distance, I wouldn't want a lot of people over anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I I don't like that either. Like if I'm gonna have people over, it's just like two or three people. That's it. Yeah. 
don't. Yeah, I'm definitely I'm definitely one of those where it's like my house is my sanctuary. Like I don't mind having a few people over, but I don't like big gatherings. It's like this is my house, get out of here. <laughs> this is my safe place. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I get it. What uh, about you? What have you been up to? Um, my content has been kind of slow lately. Um, with everything going on in the world with you know the protests and stuff, I just haven't yeah felt like it's been important at all so i just haven't really put anything out um so yeah it hasn't really been that much going on with me um the early access event for corset 2021 is going to be coming up soon um like in two weeks yeah week and a half something like that yep i did sign up for that so yeah. um as long as i get an invite i will be streaming that all day when it happens it's happening june 24th so that is something to look forward to if anybody wants to catch that i'll be streaming right here are you gonna plan on doing that zuby as long as you get an invite yeah i'm gonna try um i'll probably stream if I do, I'll probably have to stream in the evening or nighttime. Yeah. Because I'll have to work during the day. Gotcha. Well. So. No, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of excited about it. It's, I love drafting corsets. They're, yeah. I love the simplicity of it. They're so much fun to draft. And um, it's nice to usually go back to when a simpler time. I like corsets too. Mechanics. Yeah. Ikoria has not, I have really not enjoyed Ikoria. It's just... In terms of draft or just all together? All together. I just don't like the mechanics. I, I yeah, really... I mean, it's just... I don't like Mutate, like, at all. I I like Mutate for, like, EDH and all that. But it is pretty complicated. It's one of their more complicated mechanics that yeah. they've come out with. It's... it's I, I like the idea of mutating creatures and all that. It's I liked a lot of the flavor of Ikoria. Mm -hmm. Just um, as far as a standard environment, not a big fan of it. At yeah, all. I just, as a normie, it's just, there's just too much going on for me. And I'm, I'm just not enjoying it. So I'm really looking forward to the corset. Yeah, I, I I think my favorite part about Ikoria was just all the Godzilla cards. It's probably my favorite yeah. and best part about it. Yeah, yeah, I know. People love the Godzilla cards. Baltan loved the Godzilla cards, especially. Oh, of course, I know. I know. <laughs> um, Efren says oh, yeah, he loved Ikoria, too. Oh, yeah, and that's right. Companions got, like, nerfed to the ground. That's they right. They did. Oh, yeah, yeah because we, um, we haven't been on since, because um, last week they did the, the bannings. Yeah. Um, what was it? They banned Fires of Invention they and did. Ancient of Treachery? Yes. Okay, so my opinion on that, um, Ancient of Treachery was absolute trash, and I'm glad he's gone. Fires of Invention? I don't feel like that should have been banned. It, it's, I mean, it's, it's powerful, but I don't feel like it was, like, broken. Well, I think at first, when it first came out, it wasn't broken. The the thing is that with Theros and then Ikoria coming out, there was so many good cards to play that were just free. Yeah. That, that you could just play for free with fires. And that's when it started becoming a problem because I don't... Because that came out in Throne of Eldraine. I don't recall it being, like, quote-unquote, broken in Throne of Eldraine or anything. Yeah. And, and maybe a little bit in uh, Theros, but not that bad. Yeah. The, the thing with Agent of Treachery is I feel like that wouldn't have been a bad card had there not been so much easy ways to ramp it and cheat it out. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It was um, Agent of Treachery with Wynota. It was just like, th this is too much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm glad. Even, even before when there wasn't as many ways to like cheat agent of treachery out i mean cheat's not the right word just you know being able to get out on the battlefield for free it was still like one of my least favorite cards ever oh yeah it's super annoying yeah and, like i said cards like that the seven mana cost should have been enough prohibitive enough for it but since right. ramp was so easy yeah there was so much ramp and free casting i mean yes it 
why wouldn't you play it? You know? <laughs> right? Um, Pat Crack Fever says, oh, cheat is the right word. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey. I mm-hmm. was, yeah, I think so too. I was just trying to be polite. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, and the companion nerf, that was, um, I feel like it was an appropriate change. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, at first, like companions at first they were really cool because i like the deck building restrictions they put on and then as usual the internet usually breaks most magic cards and then you really start seeing oh these are um these are dumb yeah (laughs) and then then i got sick and tired of companions like most people did and yeah i I kind of agree with what they did with it because you essentially have a free card in hand that you cast, you can cast whenever, you know, you don't even get that punished having to mulligan down to six because you still have seven cards in hand. Yeah. Yeah. I I think it was a good change. Um, I mean, it definitely nerfs the companions, but at least something like that shows that Watsi isn't afraid to try to print something that, kind of broke the game for a little bit because it definitely broke legacy and vintage and all that (laughs) yeah it's unbroke now though so we're good i think for the most part until they break it again like someone finds a way to break it again or something yeah (laughs) or they combo it with some other new card that's coming out i don't know probably probably and then they'll just ban companion altogether like they banned anti back in the day banned what anti the, the one where you'd um uh, crap i can't yeah i don't think we've ever talked about anti um anti was the mechanic where you would have to set a card aside and <gasps> oh and, and whoever won that game you'd have to give them that card we did talk about that yes okay yeah yeah that, that was that format i just we did. yeah it's just so weird and i just didn't like it so i didn't I didn't retain talk, the information. <laughs> like, I just, like, put it right out in my brain. Yeah, we did. We talked about it on the I, last I, episode. I forgot, okay? Yeah, we both forgot, okay, Efren? I, We're just I'm lucky human. If I remember, I'm lucky if I remember what I did yesterday, okay? Yeah, don't judge us. Um, so do you want to go straight into um, Corset t- 21, or do you want to t- talk about another thing first? Well, let's talk about another thing first because okay. it, it, it shouldn't take too long okay. on it. So th- this isn't exactly related to magic, but it is related to magic. So last Tuesday, was it? Hold on, let me look at my calendar. Yeah, last Tuesday, they on D&D Beyond, they released the digital version of the Mythic Odyssey of Theros, the Theros campaign book for D&D. Nice. Uh, this is a D and D's second crossover to magic. Um, cause the first one was Ravnica and I love that book. So I've been diving into this, uh, Theros book here and mm-hmm. it is really, really good. Like even if someone who has no desire to really play D and D or anything, the thing that's great about this book and the Ravnica book is just the amount of lore that's dripping all over this book. It's, it's mm. crazy good. Oh, cool. Yeah. So it's, it's, I would say one of the bad things about it for anybody who's um, maybe on the fence, like I'd say definitely get it if you're a fan of Theros and you want to be able to play a Theros campaign in D&D. One of the downsides that I don't really like is so you get to uh, worship any one of the 15 gods. And then as you, you know, you choose a god that you want to you want to worship, right? Like, hey, I want to worship Crufix or Heliod or, you know, whoever it may be. And you start getting what they call, like, piety points or something, where when you get a certain amount of level of piety, you start gaining more godly powers or something like that. Ooh. So it's cool. It sounds awesome. Yeah. But it's very similar to the Ravnica book to where when you choose a guild you decide um you start getting more levels in that guild and you unlock more stuff so it's very similar that's probably my only downside to it that i don't like but what's also really really cool is they have they've put some of our favorite creatures and magic cards as monsters you can fight in the book 
Cool. So you want to fight Pelucranos, the freaking crazy Hydra and no. all that? Boom, this is how you run them. <laughs> how you do it. It's awesome. You want to fight that giant ass spider that was in Theros with the no. Arista or something? Here, <laughs> here, here you go. It's awesome. Cool. <laughs> Well, when are you running a Theros D and D campaign? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Just let know. me know. Uh, that would be fun. It's um, is Agent in the book? No, that's not even from Theros. Come on, Efren. No, you can't play as a Nixborn. Well, no, not really a Nixborn. Um, but you can play as a Leonin. You can play like someone who looks like a Johnny, or um, a Centaur. Cool. Or um, or a satyr as nice. well. Yeah, that sounds fun. So just let me know when you're running that campaign, and I'll make a character. I know, I know, right? I I probably should because because yeah. if I had to be honest, I like Ravnica. The book was great and all that, but I'm definitely more. I like Greek mythology. Like I mm. read so much Greek mythology, you know, growing up and all that. And mm. I Ferris is definitely something that I would personally enjoy playing more. Nice. What and about so, DMing, though? DMing? Yeah. Um, I can make something up. Okay. Like, hey, Krufix. Like, okay, Krufix, he's the best god in Theros, and he has a bank. And as you all know how Krufix works as a card, he gets to keep all his mana, so he's just storing all the mana on the plane. And um, he just starts casting really big creatures at you all, and you got to stop them. And Ooh. can you party with Gallia? Oh, the satyr? No, yes. you can't. What? Why? I mean, you probably could, but yeah, <laughs> let's do it. That would be a fun party. Yeah. Yeah. Wait. So you don't like the idea of Krufix stealing all the mana and having cast all the big creatures <laughs> no. while you're at level one? No. Yeah. It sounds good. No. It sounds fair. Nah. Not no. so much. Cool. No, well, that it, sounds it, like fun. Yeah, so anyone who... It, it it comes out... The physical book comes out next month. Um, but definitely worth checking out. Like, even even if you don't play D&D &D and you just want more lore for Theros, I think it's even worth it because I'm enjoying just reading more and more about the world. It's sort of like the story that we didn't get from the Theros set this mm. past year. Cool. I'll have to check that out. I would be interested in reading some of that myself. Yes, definitely worth it. Awesome. Um, all right. Well, let's talk about Core Set 21. Let's do or it. Do you mean or shall we call it Core Set to Fairy? Corset to fairy. Okay, so I have a special screen I'm putting up. Okay. Um. Okay. Okay. So you linked the Scryfall. Yeah, I did. I'm looking at Scryfall. Why you don't like looking at Scryfall? Well, no, no. I'm just so used to MythicSpoiler.com. It's um. I'll look at Scryfall though, just so we're looking at the same things. I've got everything sorted by color right now. Okay. Let me change my screen. Hold on one second, everybody. You just cover me up. Okay, I see how. Oh, no, I'm fixing it. Just give me a second. <laughs> just give me a second. Okay, I think that, I think we should be looking at that now. Okay, so, um, Core Set 21 has a lot of reprints. Like, a lot. Oh my gosh, yes. Um, Some really crazy reprints, too. Okay, help help me talk about the reprints because I'm since I'm newer, I don't always know what some of the reprints are. Like, okay, we're looking at this screen here. I know that Fabled Passage is a reprint because we just saw this in, in Throne of Eldraine. Eldraine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so that's a good one. People like people like Fabled Passage, right? Oh yeah, I think it's a really good fetch fetch land for yeah. the basic. I like it. Uh, it I see no problem with that. I mean, we're getting all the temples again, which makes sense since they were printed in M20 and and with M20 being rotated out um, come October. Yes. So it makes sense to reprint the temples again. Yeah. Um, I think Heroic Intervention is a reprint. Yes, that was first printed in Aether Revolt. 
I want to say, or was mm. it Kaladesh? I think it was Aether Revolt. Um, that is a really, really, really good EDH card. E even yeah. a good like standard card too. Yeah, I'm reading it. Obviously, um, it seems really good. Permanent you control, gain a hexproof, and indestructible until end of turn. For two mana, I mean, yeah, that's pretty good. That it, it's good, and and it's good that they reprinted it because that card was getting expensive. It was like um, like getting twenty twenty five bucks something like that. Mm. It's um, it I'm glad it's getting reprinted just to bring the price down. Yeah, I feel like I might have one of those. You might. Yeah, maybe. Um, what about okay? Let's just talk about the cards we're seeing here. Um, sure. What? What? Okay, so here's a Garouk. I some of these I haven't looked at. I'm gonna be honest. Okay, so we're gonna oh, stop and look even, at this Planeswalker. New Garouk or Garouk or whatever you say it. I mean, I say Garouk, but you can say it wrong if you want. It's fine. Okay, Garouk. <laughs> Okay, so he starts out with four loyalty, plus one. Up to one target creature gets plus three, plus three, and gains trample until end of turn. Okay, that's nice. Uh, minus two, sacred. create a three, three green beast creature token. Then, if an opponent controls more creatures than you, put a loyalty counter on Garuk Unleashed. That's pretty interesting. I like that. Yeah, that is interesting. That's... That's new. I mean, you're you're going to get a protector regardless. You're going to get something that can protect Garuk. Mm -hmm. um, and if the person happens to have more creatures than you, boom, you get another benefit with it. I like it. I should put this in Corvold. Ooh, he'd be great. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> so would Heroic Intervention. Ooh, yes, yes. I'm getting ideas. Um, okay, so minus seven, you get an emblem with at the beginning of your end step, you may search your library for a creature card, put it on the battlefield, then shuffle your library. I don't like that at all. Ooh, I, mean, I like it's that. It's really good, but I don't yeah, like Yeah, an emblem. That's nice. There's got to be, they, they got to eventually print a card that can deal with emblems at one point. I know, right? It's getting a little out of control. I'm a little crazy. So for a... So for four mana planeswalker, I think it seems appropriately costed and not that strong, which is which is a type of thing that I want to see. Yeah. Like it's strong on its own, mm -hmm. but it's not like warp the game strong. I totally agree. Like it's a good card, but it's not like yeah. this is gonna break everything. Yeah, it's not like Teferi or anything. Ugh. Yeah. We're, we'll get there, don't worry. Okay, so yeah. this card right next to it, Transmogrify, like, all I can think about is World of Warcraft when I see that word. No, all I can think about is Calvin and Hobbes when I see it. What? Calvin did and Hobbes? Ever, what does that have to did, do with... You, did, did you ever read Calvin and Hobbes? Oh, hell yes. I love Calvin and Hobbes. There, there was that whole uh, Transmogrify box that he had where... It was like a whole little storyline they did. I don't remember that. Yeah. Um, Dang, I'm going to have to look it up. Yeah, there's a whole... It, he had a, a cardboard box like called a transmogrifier where <laughs> he went in it and became like a chicken or he became like a little Hobbs himself oh. and all that. Okay, yeah, I'm definitely going to look that up um, for sure. But like, you don't think of World of Warcraft either because of transmogrifying in World of Warcraft? Well, now I do. It's it it the World of Warcraft did not even hit me until you said that. Oh, now. Zuby, <laughs> I, come I on! Calvin and Hobbes immediately. You're obviously not a true fan of World of Warcraft. Neither are you. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're not even playing now. I. It doesn't mean I'm not a true fan. That's true. That's true. Okay, no, so. Uh, but we didn't even read what the card what, did. What really does know. the card do? <laughs> what does the card do? It's a three and a red sorcery exile target creature. That creature's controller reveals cards from the top of their library until they reveal a creature card. That player puts that card onto the battlefield and shelves the rest of the rest into their library. I don't oh, like that. Oh, I do like that. I do like that. That's just going to be like you're going to want to exile your I mean, you, you could exile an opponent's creature and all that stuff, but, you know, you could also exile your own creature if you want to get right. a better creature. Yeah, but if that. you, you know, if you if you have a token or something, like, real stupid, 
who cares, right? Yeah. True. And then you get something out of your library, which is not a token. It's probably a good card. Like Corvold. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, what else do we like here? Ooh, what about this vampire cleric? A uh, vampire cleric. Is that the Vito one? Vito, Vito Thorn of the Dusk Rose. Oh, I love Elenda the Dusk Rose. Look, this is her thorn. Vito Corleone. Ooh. It just wasn't enough time, Michael. What? Wasn't enough time. What are you saying? The, the Godfather. No. You I don't, don't. I don't know what you've that. Never watched. You've no. Never watched The Godfather. You I don't, don't watch trash like The Godfather. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Uh, I knew that would get you. I knew that would get you. <laughs> oh, damn. Okay. Sorry. Okay. It's just not my thing. I'm just not into like mob stuff. Movie. Yeah. yeah. It, it's fine. It's fine. But okay. Damn, don't call that trash. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, what does Vito do? Um,. He's a legendary creature, vampire, cleric. Yes. Whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. Yes, 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 yes. Sorry, Baltan. Baltan's upset about what I just said about the Godfather. Yeah. Sorry. I know. It was a joke. I only meant to hurt Zuby, not you, Baltan. Um, okay, you can pay <laughs> three black, black. Creatures you control gain lifelink until end of turn. Yes, 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 yes. I love everything about that. That is so good. A 1-3 three for 3. So this is... Yeah. um. Crap, he, he's one part of that combo, that Sanguine Bond to mm. enchantment combo. Do you, you know what I'm talking about? The no. Sanguine Bond and exang Exsanguinate, or I don't know. What are you saying? So, no. So there, there's two enchantments that are really popular to play in EDH um, that make an infinite combo where one part of it is whenever you gain life, a uh, target opponent loses that much life and whenever target opponent loses that much life you gain that much life <gasps> so it just so, so it just creates a cycle of yes both of those abilities triggering off until your opponent is dead yeah and, and then you start targeting all the whole board so yes. so it's a, it's a popular uh combo to play and this creature hat is has one part of that combo on gotcha it. okay so you, you you have multiple sources to get that combo going with yeah. this creature. Yeah, so so you would have um so if, if someone were to exile the enchantment that mm -hmm. does the same exact thing as the first part, mm -hmm. now you have the creature to be oh, able to do it. That's great. Exquisite yeah. blood and sanguine bond. That's what it is. Yeah, I can, I can never remember the name of the cards. I'm terrible. Yeah, I like that. That's nice. Um yeah. what about this little goblin rogue right here? Conspicuous oh, cons Snoop. Con conspicuous Snoop. Um, yeah. what was it? it w was it Baltan and Discord like showing like how there's an infinite combo with that thing too now <gasps> with, with Splinter Twin? Oh, really? So the co the infinite combo that I saw, you could possibly do what turn three, turn four in Modern or something. You you play this card, and then you get a card called. I don't know, Goblin Bogwarts or something, or Hogwarts, I don't know. <laughs> um, that, that basically lets you search for a goblin and you put it on top of your library. Mm -hmm. And so this will get the ability of that card and you want to find something like Kiki Jiki that can make copies oh. of a target. So you you would keep making cop... You, so Conspicuous Snoop would get copies of Kiki Jiki or get Kiki Jiki's ability so he could keep creating copies of himself. And then you create like however many copies you want. You then oh, your God. last copy is the the Goblin Hogwarts Mother thing that allows you to search for a Goblin card. Mm -hmm. And then you go search for a card called Mog Fanatic that allows you to sack sack a Goblin and deal one damage to target opponent. Wow! So you just sack all those copies you just mm -hmm. made and and you just know. destroy your opponent. Yeah. Oh, Bogger Har Harbinger. There you go. Okay. Not not Goblin H Hogwarts or something. <laughs> um, I like this card though. It's I feel like the flavor. I love the art. It's, I love the art. Yeah, it's really it's set up nicely. It's a two two for 
to red. Play with the top mm-hmm. card of your library revealed. You may cast goblin spells from the top of your library. As long as the top card of your library is a goblin card, Conspicuous Snoop has all activated abilities of that card. Yeah, I like it a lot. Yeah, it's, um, that's cool. It, and it's a cute little art, too. He's, I know. It, it looks, he's, and I feel kind of bad for the goblin, too, because <laughs> it looks like he wants to just be part of the crowd, right? And <laughs> Well, he's left out. he's snooping. He's just, like, super obvious. Well, we don't know his life. Yeah, we don't. He, he could be, like, maybe I want to go in there and they're having fun or... And I'm being left know. out. Wow. Yeah. Wah. <laughs> maybe they're playing basketball inside and he's too short and they didn't They didn't pick him. Basketball? So, yeah. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so one other card right here that I want to talk about is the Thieves Guild Enforcer on the far uh, right. I love this card right here. Okay, so what does it do again? So it's a one black mana human rogue, 1-1, one, one, has flash. When when th- when Thieves Guild Enforcer or another rogue enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent mills two cards. Okay. Okay. As long as the opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard, this gains plus two plus one and has death touch yes that's i mean for one mana where it could possibly eventually become a three two with death touch that's yes. not too bad yes um we we are gonna need some like rakdos rogue tribal i think going on with that yeah yeah with i mean the, there's um, also the 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 other rogue from yeah, what eldrain the yes. robber of the rich yes 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 I think that one has flash too, does it? No, no, it doesn't. It have has flash, fly. No. Does that no, fly? But what's has what's reach? cool about this is um is I, I love the flash on it because when you know your opponent has maybe six cards in their graveyard, boom, you flash this you flash this in yes. and it immediately has death touch. Yes. And if you're like you could like maybe play it okay. I don't, I don't like a mill, it's not necessarily that I like a mill card, but I like playing mono black discard, and so if you play something like this with discard, you're, you're getting more cards in your opponent's graveyard that way too. Ooh, I could put this in Kroxa in my EDH deck. Yeah, there you go. To make you all mill, and then, Ugh. and then when, then when it inevitably dies, I just put it back into my hand and <laughs> yeah. make you all, not mill, mill but discard. Discard, yeah. Oh, oh no, no, no! It's each opponent mills two cards. Oh yeah, just yeah. Making you discard. But if you're playing this in combination with some discard stuff, it helps you to have more stuff in your opponent's graveyard to give yeah. it the plus two, plus one in death touch. Um. Okay, so I am not gonna talk about Peer into the Abyss because this is the most disgusting art I've ever seen in my life. Nothing against this artist. It's not like it's not like the art is like done poorly it's just the picture is gross i guess i've never really looked at it what so how do you not immediately see that it's just like revolting it's fucking bizarre it's so I mean, gross I, it's weird so i have to scroll past it i can't look at it so oh, you know we didn't even get to talk about um one of the best red cards to be printed fiery emancipation Oh, okay. We're going back up. Okay, here we go. Fiery Emancipation. (gasps) Oh, we do need to talk about this. We need to talk about Fiery Emancipation because this is a good card. So it's three and triple red, so six mana. Expensive. If a source you can control would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals triple. What? Permanent or player and said, yes. (laughs) So... I have this enchantment out. I have Torbran out. Yeah. And I've got a little pinger out that deals one damage to all opponents. Yep. Guess how much damage it's doing now? It's doing nine damage. If I was good at math, I would know, but I'm not. Oh, okay. (laughs) (laughs) I'll never play this card because it's going to be too much thinking for me. Sorry. Oh, it's it's a good a card match. though. It's a good card. Oh, I can't wait to put this in Tor Brand. You have a Tor Brand deck, don't you? Yes. Yeah. It's gross. It's this card is going to be a problem. You, do you, well, do you think it's going to be more of a? Pro- 
I think more of a problem in EDH. I don't. I do too because of the casting cost. Like it's really expensive, and usually in mono red, I feel like you're not playing super expensive things, so it might be hard no. to get this out. Yeah, because in mono red, you kind of want to top out at four, possibly five. Yeah. But m most of the time, you want to top out at four. But I so. agree. In EDH, this is going to be like a real pain. Yeah. <laughs> Muhammad, For this sure. is not okay. This is totally disgusting. <laughs> it is, right? It's insane. I love it. What about Runaway Steamkin? Oh, God. Oh, oh this is going to make... Um... This is going to make Historic Mono Red really disgusting. It's already kind of powerful, right? Historic yeah. Mono Red. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's oh got gosh. Goblin Chain Whirler. Oh my god, Goblin Chain <gasps> Whirler. Oh. With this out. No, no, oh. no. No. With Torbran out at the same time, too. Oh god, nine everybody's damage dead. to all creatures. Just everybody's dead. Yeah. Yeah. Screw that noise. I want to yeah. play it. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Baltan says get to the dogs and cats. So we're going to do that. I, I want to look at this Liliana stuff, though. Yeah, wasn't there, a, like, a really good black card that came out today? Like, Liliana's steward or Liliana... Oh, Li Liliana's standard bearer. Yeah, what does this do? So it's a two and a black zombie knight creature that's a three one with flash. When this enters the battlefield, draw X cards where X is the number of creatures that <gasps> die under your control this turn. Oh, Ooh. yes. In a I in a sacrifice deck? Oh, yeah, in a sacrifice deck. Or let's just say someone like Baltan cast a Damnation or Wrath of God on you. Yes. With, with, with your Corval deck or something. And yeah. then you're like, okay, fine, whatever. And then I just had after six he's done, creatures I'm going to flash die. this in and draw like 15 cards. Yes. Yeah. Because Baltan would do that. Baltan would do that. It's true. But it's okay. Yeah, it's That's okay. That's how you play. Still like yeah. Um, okay. Let's just pause here for a second and talk about these um borders, different borders on these cards. Yeah, it because um yeah, you wanted to bring it up because there's so many Well, really... we're just seeing some here. Like we can see like the Liliana's standard bearer. There's two different versions of it. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna say something right now. Alright. I don't like them. Yeah, now now so so I'm gonna say I have not really been looking that much at M twenty one spoilers like you. Like this <laughs> is actually probably the first time in since I don't know when that I've like really actually taken a look at it, a lot of the spoilers and I'm seeing I'm kind of seeing these card frames for the first time here yeah and I agree it to me these like weird borders like looking at Liliana's standard bear the alternate border showcase art or whatever mm -hmm. it looks kind of cheap or like like cheaply made or something like like yeah I don't I personally don't like it I don't I don't know. It's just it's too much color. I don't know. The it I think it's too bright and the it it looks too the best word I can think of, too CGI'd. I guess like the border like it doesn't look I don't I don't know. It it looks too computery or computer animated or something. It kind of just like looks like a Pokemon card or something. Yes, yes. Yeah. I was just going to say like it looks like it belongs in another card game. Yeah. Um, Colin says they'll be cool in foil and that is a good point. These might look those might look really nice foiled with those special borders. And, and I will say um, I guess to also play devil's advocate here because i remember when maybe these look better on paper as well yeah because i will say when i first saw a lot of the comic book art from the icoria set i wasn't a fan of it until i finally got to hold it in my hands yeah and it looked way better than i thought it would yeah so so maybe I'm, I'm we hoping, could give it I'm a chance i'm hoping it'll look better yeah on paper but right now as, as we're seeing it i'm not a fan of it yeah i don't love it yeah. I don't. Um, how, how do you even get these kind of cards here? Like, how do you get these 
special bordered cards. Um, okay. And they're making this so difficult on how to get all these different Let let versions. me Okay, I have information on that. And I okay. can tell you if you'll just give me like a second here. All right, well I gave you a second. Okay, hold on. <laughs> I'm going to pull it up on the screen. Okay. Collecting Corset 2021. Showcase treatments. Okay, this is the special showcase border. Okay. Like the like this one on Teferi, that's like the blue one. Um So is it like every of the colored planeswalkers are getting their own kind of showcase, it looks like? Because I red looks so different compared to black. Yeah. Okay. And I blue don't... looks different okay. compared to it says these showcase cards can be found in draft boosters and collector boosters so um, they'll be in regular boosters potentially yeah that's what it sounds like then yeah and they're like special um land ones too and yeah, i don't know it, i'm not a fan of that border for the lands to be yeah. honest so there's also there's also borderless cards yeah, but which... this isn't new. This is a this is a regular thing now, apparently. Yeah. Um We're becoming Pokemon here where there's like five different versions of one card. <laughs> it it's says true. I mean, yeah. Pokemon does that. Which I guess a good it keeps the cost down, I guess. Well, I yeah, I didn't think about that. I guess it probably does. Um Maybe. this says the borderless cards can be found in draft boosters and collector boosters. So, same thing. I guess you have a chance to get this in a regular booster. Okay. Okay, Teferi has so many art variations. Aren't there like 10 or something different variations? Well, so you can get the different art variations, and then you can get all of the different art variations with the special showcase border, too. Oh, my God. So, it's just like, what? There's so many different versions. And like there's nine different versions I just counted on Scryfall. Oh my gosh. Um, Why? Efren says there is one third chance of getting them instead of the normal version in the draft boosters. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Yeah, but why so are there, like five million to fairies. So the 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 different to fairies like just have like a slightly different yeah, art background. background of... Yeah, it's yeah, like this time circle is like a slightly different color in each picture. But like that's it. That's okay. <laughs> it's just a lot. It's just a Oh, it's supposed to be four different seasons? That doesn't look like it at all. I'm I'm looking at the art here. It does not look like four different seasons. Huh. How, how do you tell what seasons what? I don't know because it's like <laughs> it's like he's floating through time and he's just you can't tell what's going on around him. Yeah, it just it seems like a lot for me. Yeah. Yeah, it says there are four regular frame versions, four showcase versions, and a borderless version along with each in foil. Ugh. <laughs> so there's also extended art. Um, okay. There's so many. There's so many. I'm not... It, it's huge. overwhelming, to be it, honest. Yeah, like, I, in the past, I've been like, oh, I like the alternate arts, this and that. But, like, this is kind of too much. I agree. This is, like I said, we're getting into Pokemon territory, where Pokemon does something extremely similar, where, where they'll have you know, the main card, you know, the original card or something, then a, an alternate art, then a super rare alternate art version <laughs> of it. Yeah. And, and we're, we're entering, that's what magic's becoming. Holy crap. Yeah, there's just a lot. And like you said, I mean, the good thing about it is, I guess it probably helps keep the cost down if there's like yeah. more versions available. So there's always that. They're doing collector boosters again. Um... Have you bought a collector's booster at all? I've or? I've never bought a collector's booster, no. Have you ever opened one? No. No? Okay. Neither have I. I was so, just curious. 
No, I haven't bought any, and I also haven't stolen any. So, no, I've never opened one. Whoa. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> I mean, I said, no, I didn't buy any. And then you were like, but have you well, opened any? Well, no, it's, you know, may maybe someone gave you one or something. Oh. Or, you know what I mean? Or Yeah, no, I'm just, yeah. Or Mr. Kitten was like, here you go. No. No, I have not. I don't think I have. Have I? Have I ever opened a collector booster? Anyone? Yeah, I. I don't think I, so. No, I was just curious because I haven't. I've never opened. one. I mean, I've seen people open them up, but I've never opened one up before. And it's I. I kind of don't really like. I yeah. get the feel of it, but I'm kind of like, eh. Yeah, eh. I haven't. I haven't felt. I haven't felt the need to to get any of those myself. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean they're fine. But it's kind of like they do one with every single set now, so... It's becoming less special. Yeah. Oh, Efren, you got one for your birthday? Oh, that's cool. Oh, Did you make a video? Yeah. Did you make a Pat Crack Fever video opening it? I hope so. You should post it. <laughs> I like watching people open booster packs. Yeah, especially for newer sets and all that e yeah. even sometimes when it's really old stuff too you're like yeah. mm, what could it be yeah no you were sick so you just opened it wow way to be selfish you could have made content wow. for your channel efren thanks efren you we wanted to see for, it he could have made content for card sphere but <gasps> so selfish exactly i was a pkp <laughs> fan back when she was a filthy pack opener <laughs> opening packs i'm still a filthy pack opener thank you very much i don't do it as much like on my channel but maybe i it should gets expensive <laughs> yeah it does it really does okay let's talk about some more um corset 21 shall we talk about the doggos or, or sh should we let's just do it talk about teferi real quick before we get to the good stuff yeah let's talk about teferi do you want me to find teferi here yeah, because... Let's do it. Let's just get it over with. Because this Teferi card... Okay, okay. I like playing blue, all right? You yep. know that I'm a blue mage and all that. I like blue. Yeah. This Planeswalker card here, this is ridiculous. Yeah. Ridunculous here. Now, where, I mean... Where, there he is. <laughs> and all his art like, versions. Wasn't he, like, one of the first ones? There, There is, like, five million versions of him. Yeah. Yeah, so... Yeah, Tell us what this card does. It does a lot of stupid things. It does. Um, he's two two and two blue. Uh, starts off with three loyalty. His plus one is draw a card, then discard a card. His negative three is target creature you don't control phases out. What? Main, so phasing is essentially... It goes away for a turn and then comes back. Um, yeah, no. Mm -mm. And then the negative two is take two extra turns after this one. So negative so two or negative 10. I mean, sorry. Oh God. I was like, what? <laughs> no, negative 10. Uh, you take <laughs> two extra turns after this one. So just, just those three abilities right there are yeah. not too bad on their own. The problem with mm -hmm. this card is you may activate loyalty abilities of Teferi on any player's turn. Anytime you could cast an instant. Yeah. This card is Stop gonna get banned. It's gonna that. get banned. There's no way. It's too. It's the, too powerful. They they haven't banned. They didn't ban the other two Teferis, and they were really oppressive. This one is worse, though. Like it is. I. God, you could almost make the argument that is it really worse? I mean, the, the at worst, you're gonna be able to draw through your deck more with it. So it, you it may activate itself. loyalty abilities of Teferi at, on any player's turn, anytime you could cast an instant. So you can do it on your turn and then do it on all of your opponent's turns as well. Yeah, so in a game of standard, um, you play this, doesn't get countered, doesn't get killed right away. You're going to want to draw a card, then discard a card. Yeah. So you're at four loyalty, then on your... Play, and then on your opponent's turn, mm -hmm. you're going to want to neg three to protect it if they okay. have a creature that can possibly attack it. So bringing it back down to one. Yeah. So then on your turn again, the only thing you do is draw a card, discard a card, and then yeah. you can probably do it one more time on their turn 
if they end up killing it. So it, it, it in that way, it I feel like it's bad because you can dig through your library a lot and then also put stuff in your graveyard, mm -hmm. which is great. But I still feel like the three mana Teferi is more oppressive than this mm -hmm. one. But, th but where this one gets out of control, though, is in EDH. In yes. EDH, yeah, I will hate to play against this in EDH. Yes. Yeah. I feel like in standard, it's not too bad in standard. At least right now. Oh, oh, but I say that and then watch. They're gonna, <laughs> yeah. They're gonna they're gonna ban it just like um I thought Oko wasn't that bad. Yeah. I just <laughs> like like I this is too powerful. Like I just think this is too powerful. Somebody's gonna come up with some wild combo and like uh, like plus I, I fifty to fairy, and then they're just gonna take two. Act people are just gonna like win the game a million times I, in a I row. Don't, I don't know right now in standard if it's possible to do something like that, but in EDH, where you ha in EDH you would have a you have a Traxa which can put more loyalty counters on Teferi. Mm. You've also got Oath of Teferi, mm -hmm. which allows you to activate Planeswalker abilities twice each turn oh you've no also got, you've also got the chain veil which came out of m15 which allows you to activate planeswalker abilities twice on your turn oh so, god so yeah in edh this is going to be disgusting i completely agree with you on that on standard right now i'm sort of thinking it's not that bad in standard right now at least hmm I, and, and I may be absolutely wrong. I <laughs> yeah, I I just this card is just gross. It's just it gross. It, I mean, th this is the type of card. So you remember that one game we played where I got the emblem out for Narset yeah. and all that, and no one paid attention at all. Yeah, this is the kind of planeswalker where you better like kill it right away as soon as. It oh comes yeah, out. you can't let you cannot let that stick around. Mm -mm. It it'll get too disgusting because your opponent, whoever's playing it, is just going to keep digging through their deck. Digging through yep. their deck. Yep. Get what they want. Well, okay, so there is a creature that is like, um, there was like an artifact creature that, oh, this one right the here. The Manticore Spark Hunter Masticore. Yes. Um, it's a 3-4 three, for 3. As an additional cost to cast this spell, discard a card. It has protection from Planeswalkers. So you can pay one, and it deals one damage to target Planeswalker. And it, it doesn't even have to tap or anything. So if you have mana, you could do that multiple times. That's not too bad. I, I haven't... Okay, no, I did see this one. I, I guess I didn't read the other abilities, though. Deals one damage to target Planeswalker. So mm -hmm. that's probably going to see quite a bit of play in standard, at least for the next three months, because with all the friggin' Planeswalkers from War of the Spark. Right, and all that. exactly. Okay, and you can pay three and it gains indestructible until end of turn. That's not bad at all. That's pretty good. Yeah. So, uh, at least there's that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, can we talk about a reprint that I'm not excited to see at all? Yeah, we sure can. Hey, um, Kyoji. Ugin the Spirit Dragon. Okay, so Ugin's a reprint? Okay. Yeah, he was originally reprinted in Fate Reforged. Um, and while I love playing this card in EDH and all that, because it's a really good board wipe, but with the amount of ramp we have in Standard right now, just like how Agent of Treachery shouldn't have been that easy to cast, this mm -hmm. is going to be way too easy to cast in Standard. Okay, so what does this card do? Because... I know you said it's a reprint, but I'm not really familiar with it. So it costs eight mana to play and starts off with seven loyalty. His plus two is deals three damage to any target. His negative X is exile each permanent with converted mana costs X or less that's one or more colors. Oh. So the only thing it can't exile are colorless and artifact cards. And then negative 10, which is amazing, you, you gain seven life, draw seven cards, then put up to seven permanent cards from your hand onto the battlefield. Whoa! What? Yeah. This Planeswalker is ridiculous. And it, and and he starts out at seven loyalty, so that's yeah, pretty high. So, so you have a really good chance of... You can do Nag 6, Nag 7, and just wipe the board with it. Wow. Exiling everything. Wow. 
I mean, like I said, as much as I love playing it in EDH, I'm not. I, I'm, I'm happy to see it be reprinted for EDH play, but for standard, no. I, I don't want to see this in standard. Yeah. Especially with how easy it is it's going to be to cast. Yeah. Um, Colin says we're going to have Elder Spell in main deck now. Like, definitely. Yeah, but, but isn't Elder Spell rotating out in a couple months? No, I don't think so. What? Elder Spell? Yeah, it, oh, is yeah, it? Yeah, it came out in War of the Spark. It oh, is. Oh, no. Uh, we're in water. trouble we're in trouble guys we're in trouble oh, no. here we go um okay i don't you know like i've never really paid attention to ugin because i'm scared of colorless cards you 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 would want you want this card in like a lot of edh decks but I, but i'm scared of them like they they're Why? not they're not a color so i don't really know what to do with them well, something like Ugin can fit in a lot of type of EDH decks. Um, you got a bug? Yeah, I do. <laughs> you can see me, can't you? No, I can't see the bug, but I see you clapping around and looking at it. Yeah, well, the, st the stream can't see me. Only you can. No. <laughs> yeah, there's like a little gnat in here flying around my face. Get a daisy to chase around it. Daisy. I don't know where she's at. No, but I mean Ugin can be like in a in a lot of like EDH decks and it's a really good board wipe too, mm. if you manage to get it out. But I'm like I'm happy to see it reprinted, but I'm not at the same time. I'm like, oh no. Yeah, that seems kinda troublesome. A little bit. What what's up with the containment priest? Is that a reprint? E oh, they keep talking about Containment Priest? Okay, yeah, that that was originally printed in Commander 2014. Um, okay. And that was, if I remember correctly, that card was, like, super expensive when it first came out. Um, and it's been reprinted. If a non-token creature would enter the battlefield and it wasn't cast, exile it instead. <gasps> so that kind of, like, shuts oh. down Winota right there. And oh, shut down. nice. Yeah, and that shuts down, um, like, Luca too, as well. And it has Flash. Ooh, that's pretty yep. nice. Yeah, so I'm kind of surprised to see that in Standard. I mean, hell, that shit, that would have been really nice to have. People remember Collected Company back in Standard. That would have been really nice to have during Collected Company days. Mm. Where Collected Company was, you look at the top six cards of your library, and you put two creatures from your hand that cost three or less onto the battlefield. Oh. And that was super strong. Yeah, that sounds pretty nice. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah Containment no, Priest no, will no. be nice. Um. Okay, let's talk about Rin and Sari, Inseparable, since it's right here. Oh, wait, you know, you saying that name, is that supposed to be like a play on Ren and Stimpy? No, it's not. Obviously. Oh. Ren and Stimpy are not a dog and a cat. Yeah, they are, aren't they? C no? Ren's a cat and... St no, no, Ren's the chihuahua and Stimpy's oh, the cat. Ren is a chihuahua, but no. Stimpy but is not a cat. cat. No. Stimpy is a cat. No. St uh, I'm going to Google it right now. <laughs> Stimpy is a cat. No way. There's no yeah. way. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to Google it right now. Oh my god, we're... Ren and Stimpy. Okay, we're looking up the Wikipedia for it, everybody. It, Stimpy's name is literally Stimpson J. Cat. Oh no! <laughs> Stimpy, a good-natured yet dim-witted cat. Oh, dang! <laughs> Shoot! <laughs> so, is that supposed to be a play on Ren and Stimpy? Well, yeah, I think so. Definitely. Oh, Ren and Siri? Inseparable? <laughs> Oh my gosh. Wow. It didn't even hit me until you said the name just now. Wow. That that's hilarious. Um, yeah, it's a dog cat. Um, it costs one red, green, white. It's a four four. Whenever you cast a dog spell, create a one one green cat creature token. Whenever you cast a cat spell, create a one one white dog creature token. Oh, it does the opposite. Right, I it thought... does. I didn't even notice that. Holy shit. They're so, they're so, they're such good friends. They're like cats and dogs. They get along. Yeah. 
You can pay red, green, white, tap it. Ren and Siri, inseparable, deals damage to any target equal to the number of dogs you control. You gain life equal to the number of cats you control. So I was in the middle of building a cat deck right now. But now you're going to build a cat dog deck? Yeah, I have to. I, I have to because it's... <laughs> yeah. Duh. Why not? I yeah, mean, of course. It, it's and have you seen some of the dogs that they've printed in this set? They are well, ridiculously cute. Let's look at them. Let me find them. Let's just scroll like up here. Even some of like even some of the cats are divine. I know I love them. Like, like feline, feline sovereign or something. Oh, here's one pack leader right here. Um, oh, yeah. look at th look at this good boy. Oh, look at Pack Leader. Um, I actually, I got this pet on Arena. I used my gold to buy it on Arena. Oh, it's a, they have a Pack Leader pet? Yeah, it's the dog. Oh, what's his name? His name is like, um, his name is like Desmond Oswald What? Garrison. I, okay. I don't know what his name is, but it's fancy. I believe you. And the initials are D-O-G. That's oh. his name. It's really <laughs> cute. Yeah, it's really cute. Okay, so Pack Leader is adorable. Um, it costs... Well, have you seen all the arts of Pack Leader? There's, there's... Are there different there... arts? Yeah, yeah. Cl click on the card okay. right there. And um, you should be able to see all three arts. Like, Oh, cause... I do see it. This one looks like cause... Lassie. Yeah, I know. I was just about to say that it looks like Lassie. Aww. Okay, but like, why are there different arts though? <laughs> why? I don't know. Why? Why? Oh, Darius Osworth Gerhardt the Fourth. That's the dog's name. <laughs> oh, he's so cute. So he costs two and a white. He's a two-two. Other dogs you control get plus one, plus one. Whenever a pack leader attacks, prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn to dogs you control. That's pretty good. I'm okay with that. Oh, it's the bundle promo. The special Lassie art is the bundle promo. Oh, are nice. they going to make me get a bundle promo now? They're going to make you get a bundle. Yep. They're going to make you get Dang a bundle. It's true. Oh, and the, and the rambunctious mutt and selfless savior... I love the the art on both of those doggy cards. Okay, we gotta find them. What colors are they? Are they white too? They're, yeah, they're white. So what you can do is if you scroll all the way up to the top, you could sort by color. That's how I've been doing it. Oh, okay. It makes Hol it a little bit easier. Hold There's on a second, everybody. Right yeah, I saw it. Um, sorted by color. Ooh, oh, what about the Alpine Watchdog? Oh, I love it. Look at that. Not on Alpine Watchdog. Oh, yes. What was this dog that was like a, it was like a Disney movie where the dog like saved people? It was a dog like this? Or are you talking about like the Looney Tunes one that always had like a barrel on it? Like, no, no, something? not a cartoon. Yeah. Like a, like a real live action. Oh, man. Somebody help me, chat. Somebody help me. The shaggy dog? No, like, like no. Bruno or... Beethoven? No, no not, not Beethoven. No, not Beethoven. It wasn't Beethoven, was it? No, no, because he didn't go around saving, saving people, people like that. It wasn't... No, you guys, there was a different, there was a different movie. I'm looking it was, at it was live like... action dog movies. It might not have necessarily been Disney, but... Old Yeller? No, that's no. sad. <laughs> Frankenweenie? Balto? No. No. None of those. It's not a cartoon. It was live action. And the dog had the little barrel around his neck. You know, like how the dog, those dogs do? Well, but that was also in a cartoon that Looney Tunes used to do. Okay, too. but it was a live action, too. But I'm trying to think. I Flipper? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It's not Benji. Not Benji, is it? No, no. Benji was a way different dog. Um, is there a Beethoven movie where Beethoven went into the snow? Because maybe that was it. 
Airbud? No. Air <laughs> no. Homeward Bound. Oh, I loved Homeward Bound. Ho yeah, but not Homeward Bound. I know. <laughs> Airbud. <laughs> oh god, definitely not Airbud. Uh, I don't know. I I I don't know. I can't I can't think of it. I don't know. I'll try to find it later and and if I remember it, I'll tweet it out cuz I know everyone's going to be like waiting with bated breath to figure out I what know, this they're, is. They're like for sure. We need, to, we need to find this out now. Got to. So the Alpine Watchdog is a two is a two two for two with vigilance. Okay, that's pretty good. I mean it's a common, but yo, vigilance, hey. hey Look who's talking to you add to your um yeah. to your EDH deck. Yeah, to your doggo doggo deck. Um, okay, so what was the other dog that we wanted to look at here? Like selfless savior and um, rambunctious mutt. Oh, there's the pack leader and the pack leader and the pack leader. Oh, rambunctious mutt. Look how cute. I know. I love it. Three white white to three four. When it enters the battlefield, destroy target artifact or enchantment an opponent controls. Because, you know, like the dog's rambunctious and it destroys things. And it just wants to play. Oh, it just wants to play. Look at this like wizard here. He's like, wait, stop. What are you doing? It's like, that's my <laughs> spell book. Iron Will? Okay, now that is sounding like maybe that was it. Is there a dog in that movie? Iron Will? Somebody help me out. Mighty Joe Young? That does not sound right. <laughs> is it Iron Will? Well, it has a white dog in it, though. Is it... Was it a white dog or was it a dog like um, we saw in, the, in that... Fir in that I don't know. I don't know. Oh God, we're gonna. Okay, okay, let's. Okay, um, okay. Keep we're, going because we'll, we'll, we get. We're getting the rest stuck. Of it. We're getting stuck. This is our. This is like we're going down a rabbit trail here with the dog movie. A rabbit trail. Right. Ha ha. Yeah. Okay. So, oh, here's the selfless, selfless savior. Look how cute it is. It's Aww, like. Oh, and the tongue. <laughs> Coming to save the day. He's like, I, I gotcha. <laughs> oh, okay. So he's a one, one for one. Oh, you can sacrifice him. Another target creature you control gains indestructible until end of turn. <gasps> Why would you want to sacrifice the dog? Aw, isn't there another dog like that though? Like from one of the Ravnica recent Ravnica sets, where you sacrifice it and it gives something indestructible. I don't like this. Yeah. I don't want to sack the doggy. But he's selfless, so he's willing to do it. He's such he's just such a good doggo. He'll go to he'll go to <laughs> a doggo heaven. We're still getting dog movies in the chat. Stop with the dog movies. <laughs> I love it. Win tin tin. <laughs> Disney's the incredible journey, white dog, Canadian wilderness. That's it! No, I don't know, but maybe. Wait, is that all the dogs? There's only like three. There's gotta be One, more. Um, well, two, they should also three. be in red and green. Oh, like red, red has Chandra's magma, a fiery dog. Okay. Um, There's probably no blue dogs. Let's be real. There's probably not a dog in black either. No, because I think they're only in uh, white, green, and red. Oh, here's one: the Bolt Hound. It's a red Bolt. card, Bolt, Bolt Hound. Dog. Yeah, it has haste. Whenever it attacks, mana, two, two. other creatures you control get plus one, plus zero until end of turn. Okay. Okay, so <laughs> a little little bit side topic here, or side uh, mention. Um, someone's mm -hmm. apparently shooting fireworks off in my neighborhood. Oh, okay. Because, you know, it's 4th of July <laughs> next month. Thursday night, you know, <laughs> random. You know. Hey, let's shoot off some fireworks, Merka. Well, well, so I don't see the actual fireworks. I'm hearing them. So it's either fireworks or someone's having a shootout. Okay, well, we're just going to go with fireworks because... Yeah, that's what I'm hoping for. We're Yeah, Turner we're hoping for the best. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's not Turner and Hooch. No, it's not. Um, a Chandra's Magmut is another dog. There's a... Ign Igneous, igneous cur. Uh, what? It's like what? another igneous cur. It's red one. It's a red card. Oh, igneous cur. Okay, I see it. 
It gets uh, plus two plus zero until end of turn. Sure, that's fine. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of... Unless they haven't spoiled all the cats and dogs yet. They Which is possible. Them. But, I mean, like, the only other cat I've seen besides Ren and Stimpy have been, has been Feline Sovereign. The other cats you control get plus one, plus one, and have protection from dogs. Yeah. They only got spoiled today. I assume there there will still be more. I hope so. Um. So, Cultivate is a reprint, right? Doesn't everybody love this uh, for EDH? Yes. Oh, 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 um, oh, there's also Pride Malkin. Look, look, did you see the cat art on that one? Yes, it's I think. two in a green. I think so. Yeah, here's the Feline Sovereign. That one's really good. Yeah. And, and really pretty. Look, they've got a Tiger art, a Tiger King art. What? A Tiger King art? Well, it's called Hangry Sabertooth. Oh, there's the Pride Malkin. Oh, it's so cute. What yeah. a good kitty. I love it. I know. Okay, and what was I, the other one you just said? No, that was it. The oh, 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 the hangry saber tooth that's um right next to Garrick on the list there. Uh, you mean Garuk? Or Garuk? Whatever. I don't know how you. This one? Yeah. Oh, hangry saber tooth. Is that the real name of this? I card? don't. I don't know. I just I hovered my mouse <laughs> over it and it says hangry saber tooth. <gasps> Yeah, it does. It says Hangry Sabertooth. At the beginning of your end step, if a creature died this turn, put a 1-1 counter on Hangry Sabertooth and untap it. Whoa, dang. Ooh. Oh, Packrack Fever. Yeah, Cujo. That was the movie. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Cujo no. meets Old Yeller. Oh. Oh. So what's your favorite card so far? Has... Oh, God. Um... Wait, there was one more that I just saw a minute ago. Oh, this one. What? Azuna Lost But Seeking. You may play two additional lands on each of your turns. Oh, what? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a reprint, and that's been a much-needed reprint. That's so good. It is. It's Like I said, it's going to be so easy to ramp up Ugin mm. to be able to get him out. Um, oh, my gosh, yeah. So... I, if I had to be honest, like what my favorite card is so far mm -hmm. would probably be Fiery Emancipation. Okay, that's a good one. Just the fact of possibly being able to triple my damage is amazing. Yeah, that's that's pretty crazy. What about you? What's your favorite so far? Um, I really like the Liliana Planeswalker, actually, which we haven't we haven't talked about yet. Yeah, what does it even do? Um, so first of all, I love this art. Liliana, Waker of the Dead. Like I like the original? the original art, yes. I even like the extended art one. That I, one looks good too. I do like the extended art, but I really like this, like, change of outfit that she's wearing in the original art. Yeah, because I wonder if that's supposed to showcase that she's trying to move on, like, after how she royally, well... I wouldn't say she really fucked up. She had no choice to do what she did yeah. during the War of the Spark story. Like, yeah. She was under control of Bolas and at the last minute decided to betray him. Yeah. And she was going to sacrifice herself and then Gideon comes up. He's like, right. no, man, I'll sacrifice myself for you. And yeah, whatever. exactly. It feels like almost like sort of, I don't know. She's trying to redeem herself, it yeah. seems like. like that, that, that's what that outfit's trying to speak to me. And, like, the posture and everything. Yeah. Like, I like the art on the on the special one, but that one is kind of like, okay, that's regular Liliana. Like, she's bringing a zombie up from the yeah. ground. Sure. But I like the art on Liliana Waker of the Dead. Like, the original one, because it's kind of like, yeah. I'm thinking about what I've done with my life. Yeah, it, it's... Do you... Like you said, with the posture, it sort of gives off an air of she wants to try to change. Yeah, she's, like, thinking she, about things, and she's like, could like, I do better? You know? Like, when when you think about her as a character, she's how old now? I mean, she's... I, I can't remember how old she actually is. I think she... I know she's well over 100. I have no that. idea. Wow, she looks good. Dang. Yeah, it's it's something to do with, like, her demonic pack or something that mm. keeps her young or something like that. I, I can't remember the whole story. Yeah. Um, but she's old and mm. um, 
so m maybe she's starting to reflect on her life of mm. hey maybe i took the wrong path and all that because her and jace used to be lovers but she just yeah. threw jace away to the side and you know and we, she's um, we've all been there <laughs> <laughs> Throw, thrown Jace to the side, you know? Like, sure. yeah, forget him. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> we don't need him anymore. No, um, yeah, but I really like this card as a whole. Each player discards a card. Each opponent who can't loses three life. I like that for Kroxa. Dang. Take that, y'all. <laughs> and then target creature gets neg X, neg X until end of turn where X is the number of cards in your graveyard. That's yes, I like it. For the negative three. Negative seven, you get an emblem with at the beginning of combat on your turn, put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. It gains haste. I love but, it. I love it. I love dang. it. Yes. So it would take four turns for you to be able to do that if you if you don't have any doubling effects or anything like that. That's um. Yeah. Oh, God. My Kroxa is supposed to be a budget deck, and I'm seeing all these cards from mm. M21 that I really want to put in. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's a good one. Yeah, that's not bad because I mean, the the plus one is very similar to Liliana of the Veil, um, where each player has to discard a card, but Liliana of the Veil costs three. This could oh. be a, you know, this could be a budget version for Liliana of the Veil, maybe. Yeah, sure. It only costs one more. Yeah. So, um, okay. So, references. Did you talk about Joel Rael? I haven't. We haven't. I don't Joel. know what card that is. Yeah, what card is that? Um, Let's just type it in. Is that like a multicolored uh, card? Or... Let's see here. Joel Riel. Oh, is this a, re a reprint? No, it's not. What, what, what color is it? It's green. She is green. a legendary creature, human druid. Oh my gosh, this card looks amazing. Look at this art. Wow. Ooh, Ooh I love her. Um, okay, let's see. She costs one and a green. She's a one, two human druid. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, create a two, two green cat creature token. There we go, cats. It's pretty good. It's pretty I love good. it. Uh, that's, you know, like you see this art. She's got these like panthers around her. Black Panthers. Like, I love they, it. They, they kind of look like Bagheera from the Jungle Book. Yes, kind of. Um, so you can you can pay four green green until end of turn. Creatures you control have base power and toughness XX, where X is the number of cards in your hand. Hmm. It's not too bad. Um, That's interesting. So you would want to have a lot of cards in your hand, right? Yeah, and I mean, they're... And, green is now starting to get plenty of card draw now um it's um just trying to think i i probably play this in um i probably put this in my cat dog deck <laughs> okay in, in the 99 because why not you have the chance of pooping out more cats yeah there you go draw your second card each turn create a cat boom i like it it's um it's definitely strong um and limited and all that yeah and um it's god it, i'm just trying to think like would this see play in standard i mean maybe like in a green stompy deck or something or yeah or like green red deck maybe i don't know yeah I don't know. i i don't know um i mean yeah usually i don't think like a cat cat dog tribal will probably be a thing in standard probably not probably I, I not mean, like, yeah yeah so I don't know, maybe it it seems like a fun card though. Definitely good in potentially good in a commander deck. Yeah, it's, yeah. I, I'm gonna probably try it in my cat dog deck. Yeah, why not? <laughs> I love that you're making a cat do cat dog deck. This is great. I have to now a after seeing that card. Yeah. Um, I mean, like I said, I was already halfway done with my cat's deck, and I'm like, oh. Now that that's printed, like, okay, it's cat dog now. We're changing. We're changing it up. Change of course. It. Um, is there any other Corset 21 card you want to talk about? So many, and we don't have all the time in the world. <laughs> so many, but so, so many little time. 
Because it's like right? so, some of these I'm looking at for the first time here, and I'm just like, ooh, yeah. ooh, I want, I want to play this card. I want to play, but yeah, I, I guess for the sake of time, it's the, maybe, we've maybe yeah. after the set comes out, we can start talking about some of our favorite cards that we play during early access or yeah, for stuff sure. Like that. Yes, uh, because that is coming up in like what did we say? Two weeks. Two weeks, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, um, so that should be like right before our next. Um, yeah, yeah. Because if Mormons. we, because if we go by the same schedule, our next Magic for Normies will be June twenty fifth. There we go, and we will have just played the new cards for the first time. Yes. Yeah. I'll, I'll try to make sure definitely play some limited. For sure. Yeah. Um, so let's play some games now. Let's do it. All right. I've got my decks ready. Okay. And we definitely want chat involved with this first game. Yeah. So we're going to play a game called Magic Cards Against the Multiverse. So <laughs> <clears throat> what this game is, is I've got some game cards here that have a question on them. And you have to answer the question using a magic card, a real Magic the Gathering card. So, chat, you can type the card name in chat for your answer. And then I'm going to pick my favorite one. Okay. Um, and Zuby, you're going to have your actual physical cards to answer. Yeah. I've got three different EDH decks right in front of me that to I'll choose be from. picking okay. from. Okay. Yes. So let's just go ahead and do the first one so everybody can sort of understand what's going on. Okay. Okay, so the first card says, What's about to take this dance floor to the next level? So answer this with a Magic the Gathering card. Efren answered with murder. <laughs> so hold up, read it again. What's about to take this dance floor to the next level? Yes. What's about to take this dance floor to the next level? Type it in chat, answer it with a Magic the Gathering card, and I will pick my favorite. Oh my god, I'm, I'm looking through, um... I don't think this deck would have anything that would... Okay, Efren answers murder again. Yeah, that's gonna take murder, the dance murder. floor to the next level. Yeah, for sure. What kind of level? I don't know. No, I don't think I have anything. Baltian so, says yeah. planar chaos. <laughs> deafening clarion. Colin says deafening clarion. Um, that would take the dance floor to the next level for sure. You've got to have something in one of those decks. I'm Zuby. looking. I'm looking. So, what would take the dance floor to the next level? Yes. Oh God, what could be good? Do you have a Teferi in there? No, I, I've actually... I didn't bring out my uh, control Teferi deck. Wow. I know. Thank goodness. I know, right? Freaking... Trash control. Oh, 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 here we go, here we go. What would take it to the next level? An explosive vegetation. Explosive vegetation? <laughs> wow. What's about to take this dance floor to the next level? Okay. I'm going to choose, my favorite answer is Deafening Clarion. Because, oh, like, that's... it's loud, and, you know, like, music on yeah. our dance floor is really loud. So, Colin, you win this round. Way to go. Colin. Yeah. Okay, so our next one is, don't worry, Penny, go, go, gadget, blank. Don't worry, Penny, go, go, gadget. What? Answer what, is it. Efren going to say murder again? Go, 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 go gadget, gadget, murder. No, you can't say murder, Efren. <laughs> it's not the answer. Don't worry, Penny. Go, go, gadget. Ornithopter. <laughs> Hot soup? Is that a magic card? Yes, it is. It is a magic card. What? Go, go, gadget, hot soup? Hmm. Oh, what can I find here? Um, 
Go, go, Gadget, Oog and the Spirit Dragon. Efren's mm-hmm. not answering because I told him he wasn't allowed to say murder. Yeah, Efren. He's just refusing to answer at this point. Go, go, Gadget. Go, go, Gadget. Did you watch Inspector Gadget when you were a kid? Oh, yeah, yeah. Go, go, Gadget, Shark Typhoon. Go, go, Gadget, Shark Typhoon. <laughs> oh, dang. That's what I'm picking. Okay, I'm going to... Ch- okay, my favorite one, I'm going to say... Um, I'm going to say Ornithopter. Colin? I, I like it, too. You're, like it too. you're, you're killing it, man. If that's my favorite I, I, I one. I have to admit, I, I like that one, too. Because <laughs> it's, like, kind of like a machine and, like, you know, the gadget arms are like a machine. Yeah. Okay, our next card is I've got rhythm, I've got music, I've got blank. Who could ask for anything more? I've got rhythm, I've got blank, I've got... I've, got, no, I've, got, I've got rhythm, I've, I've got, got music, blank. I've got blank. Who could ask for anything more? Efren, why were you robbed? Efren says he was robbed. And Efren, you, you can't say murder. I've got is it charm? <gasps> I've got rhythm. I've got it? music. I've got is it charm? Who could ask for anything more? Okay. I like it. I like it. Fat ass. Efren is saying fat damnation. ass. Is that a card? I've got damnation. I, I, That's pretty good. That well, if it's a card, it's got to be a silver bordered one. Is it though? Is it really a it card? Is. I don't think it is. There's no way. I think Efren's just being salty. I didn't. I choose fat ass. I, I don't know what you're talking about, Efren, honestly. Okay, my favorite answer is going to be, um, is it charm for this one? Because that yeah, was good. You got, you got charm. I've got rhythm. I've got music. I've got, is it charm? That's a good one. Okay, our next one is going to be, our next card is, I'm sorry, sir, but your insurance plan doesn't cover injuries caused by blank. The um, asses are real cards. I don't remember fat ass. It's part of the ass cycle. What are you guys talking about? This can't be real. The asses, I don't. So it's it's got to be um, it's got to be part of like the 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 unglued or something. Oh then. Oh my gosh! Wow. So the insurance. Can you can you read that again? Yes. <coughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir, but your insurance plan doesn't cover injuries caused by blank. Caused by... Colin says Zakama Primal Calamity. (laughs) Baltian says Shark Typhoons. That's pretty good. Isn't covered by... Ooh, here we go. Isn't covered by Urza's Rage. Ooh, okay, you say Urza's Rage, and Pat Crack Fever says Lightning Bolt. Ooh, that one's good. Isn't covered by Lightning Bolt. Um, okay, so my favorite is going to be, I'm going to pick Shark Typhoon. Because I feel like, I feel like a Lightning Bolt would be covered by insurance. Maybe? Shark Typhoon with flying sharks? Definitely not covered by insurance. No. But also potentially not a lightning bolt. Because sometimes they're like, we don't cover acts of God. Right? And they think weather is... Yeah. Okay. Um, Okay. So let's do one more. Okay. Okay. We're going to pick... Well, Tian, you're on the board. Um, Okay. So my last one... Okay. This card says... Summer lovin' had me a blast. Blank happened so fast. Oh, God. I don't know. Summer lovin' had me a blast. Hold on. Let me pull out my vampire deck. Oh, okay. Gotta be something good in there. Okay. Summer lovin' had me a blast. Blank happened so fast. 
swamps happen so fast. Nah. I'll bet a pack that Pixie can't name the movie that quote is from. What quote? <laughs> I didn't even know there was a quote happening. Oh, are you you don't know what movie that's from? What movie's what's from? This? Yeah, that card. Oh the, the, no. The it's no. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've never seen it. So, Summer Lovin' Had Me a Blast, Blank happened, so Kaya's Wrath happened so fast. <gasps> oh, that's a good one. <laughs> um, yeah, Efren says God. Wrath of God. <laughs> yeah, no, I've never seen Grease. What? No, I don't watch old movies. Dang. Yeah, sorry. Never seen, God I mean, Godfather, okay, I can understand that, but Grease? Nah. Come on, it's one of the best musicals. Really? For the time. For the time. I mean, um, it, it, it's definitely aged, but it's a fun musical. Colin says Ember Cleave. Boltam says Dirge Bat. <laughs> what did you say, Zuby? I said Kaya's uh, Kaya Wrath. Wrath. Okay, my favorite is Kaya's Wrath. Ha Summer Love and Have Me a Blast. Kaya's Wrath happens so fast. And it does. Nice. Uh, awesome. Descent yeah, into Madness. It's Efren is over. We're done. Efren, you're done. Efren, Descent into Madness happens so fast. I don't think Efren got any right. <laughs> Sorry. The worst. Sorry, Efren. You just didn't pick very good cards. It happens. Yeah, it does. Wait, no, I choose Active Treason. No. Oh, Active Treason would have been good. I like that. Yeah. It's too late now, though, because I already picked Kai's Wrath. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so that was Magic Cards Against the Multiverse. Did you all like it? We can I, play. I love it. It's fun. It's fun. It's, it, it's fun, like, just trying to go through my decks, like, what would even fit with that? Yeah. I should have, um... Oh, God. There, oh, what was the first one that you said again? Because there, because I found a better card for it, I think. I think it was the first one. What's about to take this dance forward to the next, le next level? Yeah, I think I found Chaos Wand or... Um, oh. Or, oh, I can't remember now. Yeah. Whatever. It was fun, though. We can, we can play it again later. Yeah. <laughs> Fat Ass is the people's champion. Oh my gosh, whatever, Efren. <laughs> whatever, <laughs> Efren. Wow. All right, so what do you got for us, Zuby? So we've got a... It's not so much a game where the uh, audience would be able to play in, but it's... I wanted to go over OK Boomer cards of oh, Magic. Where um, where I know the last... last Not last week, but the last episode we talked about a lot of... um older formats and how they play but and so i was looking just diving through finding like a bunch of weird magic cards that are never ever see play at all or anything and just mm. the way they're worded are just very strange okay um, so i think i need to share my screen here okay um okay so let me know when you see my screen here you should yep. see the master sword I see it. Should I make you right. full screen? Should I make if, it full screen? If you want. All right, let's do it. Got it. You're okay. you're on. It's all you, Zuby. Okay. Well, why is there showing double? Whoa. There we go. Okay. So the first OK Boomer card. Yeah. I want to show here is called Raging River. Um, so this is very weird card. So it's a double red enchantment. Mm -hmm. It says when you attack, non-flying defending creatures must be divided as opponent wishes between the left and right sides of the river. What? You then, you then <laughs> choose on which side of the river to place each attacking creature and attacking creatures can only be blocked by flying creatures or those on the same side of the river. Uh uh. Nope. <laughs> nope. That's weird. That's weird. And I don't I, like it. I think this is like a one of its kind. Like it never, ever, never saw anything like this again. And when did that come out? 
I, I want to say this is like third edition or something or fourth edition, something like that. Wow. Like it really early. So I will say I like the flavor of this card because it's it's kind of neat. It's it's confusing, right, for players. But it's yeah. kind of neat thinking like you play this enchantment now it's like okay your creatures are on either side of this river and they got to try to cross the river or something to try to attack your opponent right yeah the flavor of it is cool but mm -hmm. it's confusing as but it hell. but it doesn't actually work yeah that's no. weird okay boomer okay boomer all right our <laughs> next one so so these are some some strange cards that we never see anything like this anymore. It's called City in a Bottle, a continuous artifact. So what? So there were a lot of cards that would not allow you to play cards from certain expansion sets. So all cards from Arabian Nights must be discarded from play except for City in a Bottle. While City in a Bottle is in play, no further cards from Arabian Nights can be played. So what? So if your so if your opponent is playing nothing but like an Arabian Nights deck, and they play this card, they're like, oh well, I guess your deck is useless now. What if you're playing limited? I and know. And you right? opened your like everything in your deck is from that. What? Right. I know. Oh no. <laughs> I didn't even think of limited until you just said it. And I'm like, oh, my, yeah, you basically can't play. Neither of you would be able to play because it's all cards. Like, did was limited a thing when this card came out? I don't know. I don't know when I don't know when limited actually like first came into being. Wow, that's so weird. It is. Yeah, okay, Boomer, to this card for sure. <laughs> All right, next one. So pretty similar to City in a Bottle, this is Golganthian Silex. Okay. A four mana cost mono artifact. Uh, you pay one. All cards from the Antiquities expansion, including mm -hmm. Golgothian Silex, must be discarded from play. So once again, if there was limited play, you're what? just sort of... <laughs> <laughs> that's so weird i like i just don't understand like who was like oh this is a fun idea yeah i don't know it, it, as you can tell like after these kind of cards we never saw anything like this again no 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 people did not like that i'm sure wow okay boomer yeah all right our next one lightning storm hmm. so what is really interesting about this card i'll read it first so lightning storm is a one double red instant lightning storm deals x damage to target creature player where x is three plus the number of charge counters on it you can then discard a land card to put two charge counters on lightning storm you may choose a new target for it any player may play this ability but only if lightning storm is on the stack so <laughs> So what's really interesting about this card is I can't think of any other instant card that would that has an activated ability on itself. Yeah, that's so weird. Cuz like how I, does that work with the stack? So you would play Lightning Storm, Lightning Storm would be on the stack. Yeah. And then anybody can respond to... And discard um, at that point. To, to discard the land card. That would put would the then... counters on it before it resolves. Yep. Yep. So so you'd put the two ch charge counters on it and then choose a new target for it. So meaning if I play this against you, you may discard a land card to then play Lightning Storm against me. <gasps> but, my but, but, but that's like another <sighs> copy of Lightning Storm in a sense. So, but so my original lightning storm would still go off. Okay, but then you but just like it do have, it back. It, you do like yeah, the it same. Would have, it, it would have like a charge counters on it though. It's super weird and super confusing. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it, this don't. is like a one of its kind type thing to where I can't think of another instant that would you'd be able to activate an ability on it. Yeah, somebody somewhere was like, this is so great, but no, it's not. It's not. Okay, Boomer. Yeah, okay, Boomer. <laughs> Sorrow's Path. 
this came out in the dark it's a land you tap this exchange two of opponents blocking creatures this exchange may not cause an illegal block sorrow's path deals two damage to you and two damage to each creature you control whenever it is tapped what <laughs> <laughs> This exchange so, may not cause an illegal block? What's an illegal block? So it would be something like, let's say you have two flyers coming at your opponent. Or or, or no, let's just say you have one one creature on the ground and one, one creature that's flying. And you're... You couldn't switch anything that can't yeah. block flying. Yeah. Gotcha. Or, 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 or cause an illegal block in a sense. Okay. Um, Sorrow's Path does two damage to you and two damage to each creature you control whenever it is tapped. What? Yeah, it's pretty terrible. Oh my god. Wait, that's a land? Yep. Wait. You can't even tap it for mana or anything. What? How is it considered a land then? You just put it out there and then you just tap it and do this weird thing? Yep. Okay, I literally hate that card. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Boomer. Bye, Boomer. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> uh, spell with your Volute. Uh, three double blue. It's an enchantment aura. Google, stop. Google, stop. <laughs> hey, Google, stop. <laughs> <laughs> was your Google Home going off? It was going nuts. <laughs> was it because I did buy Felicia or something? No, or you're no, in my ears. It can't hear you. Yeah. I'm oh, so that's... sorry. Go ahead. It like was not <laughs> stopping. <laughs> All right. So Spellweaver Volute or Volute or Volute or something. Sure. It's three double blue. It's an enchantment aura. You enchant an instant card in a graveyard. Whenever you play a sorcery spell, copy the enchanted instant card. You may play the copy without paying its mana cost. If you do, remove the enchanted card from the game and attach this card to another instant card in a graveyard. So this is like another first of its kind, enchanting an instant what? card. Yeah. Enchant and instant card in a graveyard. Oh, shit. So it's anybody's graveyard. Oh. Yeah. And, and, oh, you get to attach it again to any graveyard. Oh, oh shit. This has just got better. <laughs> it's if not you... good, Zuby. It's not good. You say that now. <laughs> Whenever you play a sorcery spell, copy the enchanted instant card. You may play the copy without paying its mana cost. If you do, remove the enchanted card from the game. So, like, it's exile at that point. Yeah. And then you And then you, you attach this card to another instant card. So I'm assuming if you can't attach what? it to another card, this just goes in the graveyard. It would just go in the graveyard. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's weird. Yep. Nope. That's doesn't make sense. It seems like it could have been like, good, but it's just weird. I like it. I think it is good. It's now not I'm reading this. It's I thought a, it was just I thought it was just your graveyard, but no, it's a graveyard. You like that card? Yeah, I kind of like it now. Ooh, oh, oh, okay, I, boomer. Call, okay. Yeah, call me a boomer. <laughs> 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 All right. Vidalcan Aether Mage. Oh, okay. Uh, one in a blue. It's a Vidalcan Wizard that's a 1 2 Hess Flash. When Vidalcan Aether Mage comes into play, return target Sliver to its owner's hand. Oh. What's weird about this card is it has Wizard Cycling. What? <laughs> wizard cycling? You can pay three mana to discard this card and search your library for a wizard card. Mm -hmm. So this is like a unique kind of cycling card of its kind because there's land cycling than regular yeah. cycling. Because land cycling, you, you discard the card and search for a land card, right? This yeah. is where they were trying to play with wizard cycling, which hmm. it, it's strange. It's weird. Yeah, I mean, like, I guess if you're playing a wizard's deck, it's probably pretty good, right? Yeah. Maybe? Yeah, I, I, I mean, m maybe? Yeah, I don't know. Cause but, like, wizard... the cycling costs more than the actual card. Well, yeah, and remember, you don't have to... You would keep it in your hand. 
and it's sort of you tutor up the wizard that you want. Yeah. Hmm. hmm. It's weird. So it's not too bad. It, it's definitely weird, though. Yeah. I think it's the only one of its kind. I don't think there's any other wizard cycling. Yeah, th this lady's a boomer at this point. She is, because this was printed in 2007. So, yeah, she's a... <laughs> she'd be 13 years old. Yeah, that's pretty boomer. Straight up boomer. In, in magic time, that's a boomer yeah, right there. That, that's sure. definitely boomer. Yeah. Wow. All right apocalypse chime so this is very similar to the other ones we saw it's an artifact cost two mana you can pay two to sack this and bury all cards from the homelands expansion you know this might be one of what? the better ones because no one likes homelands <laughs> what even is it what even i don't know why they did these kind of like cards here i just That's wanted to show so them to weird. you because i forgot these cards even existed until yeah i started I've... digging I've never heard of any of these or seen any ability like this. Okay, so what I have a question though, like who's grandmother Sanger? That wouldn't that be Baron Sanger? Grandma? Grandma yeah. maybe? She says one day or another, perhaps I shall ring my pretty chime loudly so that all may hear. What what is she talking about though? Wow, I don't know. That's the apocalypse chime. Yeah. That's it. So does that mean she'll cause a, an apocalypse? Is she's that gonna, why She's going to so bury bad? all of Homelands. This grandmother's kind of evil, honestly. Yeah, so maybe... Yeah, so she's the reason why Homelands is so bad. She rang the chime. Yeah, and then Homelands just went... <sniffs> yeah. Right, do I have another okay, one? Okay, Boomer. Oh, yeah. Chaos oh. Moon. Okay. So, three in a red, it's an enchantment from Ice Age. During each player's upkeep, count the number of permanents. If that number is odd, all red creatures get plus one, plus one, and mountains produce an additional red when tapped for mana until end of turn. If the number is even, all red creatures get neg one, neg one, and mountains produce colorless mana instead of their normal mana until end of turn. <gasps> Th this is evil! It is. Oh my gosh. It's... Wow. So it, it really of... is chaos. Wow, it really is. Yeah, because I I read it wrong because I thought it was only during your upkeep, but no, it's everybody's Each upkeep. Each player's. Oh, I, I kind of like that, though, because it's, like, weird and you're like, I don't know what's going to happen. You know, is it going to yeah. either be really good or I'm going to get, like, totally screwed? Really bad. It's either really good or really, really bad. I kind of like that one. Yeah, it, it'd be... It'd be fun to play in a sort of a chaos EDH deck. Yeah. <gasps> in EDH, like every single opponent. Oh, that would yes. be fun. But it would only really matter if um, a lot of your other opponents were playing We're red. We're playing too. red. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. That's interesting. Okay, Boomer Moon. Okay, Boomer. All right. <laughs> We've got Farmstead here. Oh, Triple that's, White that's Enchant cute. Land. Target lands controller gains one life each upkeep if double white is spent. Target land still generates mana as usual. Wait, what? Hold on. I need to think. Target lands controller gains yeah, so one life? Life each <laughs> upkeep if two white mana is spent. Target land still generates mana as usual. So it's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> You so you would enchant what? your land. Okay. Yes. You would enchant your land and during your upkeep you would pay two mana to gain one life. Why? Because you want to gain the one life. Target land still generates mana as usual. Yeah. So you can tap it to help pay for the one one? Yep. The the planes for, for the planes? one life, yep. This is so dumb and weird. I don't understand. I like the art. The art's pretty. I do like the art. It's cute. <laughs> Good job, that, Mark Poole. It's a really bad card, though. Yeah, no. Mm -mm. Okay, Boomer, Farmstead. Just go back to your farm. Camouflage. <laughs> um, this card <laughs> is making me laugh. Look at that picture. It's the art itself. Um, <laughs> all right, what? Yeah, I've got three more cards after this, so I'll pick up the pace here. Um, oh. Camouflage. 
Uh, one green, it's an instant. You may rearrange your attacking creatures and place them face down, revealing which is which only after defense is chosen. If this results in impossible blocks such as non-flying creatures blocking flying creatures, illegal blockers cannot block this turn. Oh. Why so Why that, did they want to do this rearranging thing? Because they want to confuse players. So you may rearrange your attacking creatures and place them face down only after defense. So, so basically you would put, you would flip your creatures face down, just rearrange them, whatever. And only after your opponent decides to block which, you okay. then reveal the creatures. Gotcha. So like they could use an instant or something if they had it, but they don't really know what you've changed. So you you probably want to play this before blocks are chosen, I think. So so you could before they decide to declare blockers, you flip them upside down, switch them around a bunch of times. Yeah. And they, and they start blocking. Then they're like, "Oh, you didn't block my 2020, you know, giant cat creature." Gotcha. And that, and boom. That's weird. Yeah. Okay, boomer camouflage. For sure. Battle of Wits. I don't think you've ever heard of this card before. Nope. Three double blue enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you have 200 or more cards in your library, you win the game. What? Why would you have 200 <laughs> cards in your library? There are legitimate legacy decks that th they would have them. I, I know you don't see my face right now, but they'd be like tall ass decks that have like three, 400 cards in their deck. Mm -mm. And they play what they call a battle of wits deck, where it's just a whole bunch of cards to try to tutor up this card to put on the battlefield and win the game. That is so dumb. I People would be so that. angry if I played against a person that was playing 200 cards in their library. Imagine you're playing Mill in a legacy tournament, and then you go up against the battle of wits player who has over 200 cards in their deck. Oh my god! <laughs> I would just be like, yeah, I concede. Bye. Yeah. Ugh, oh, I hate God. it. This is definitely okay, Boomer. Goblin game. Aw. Goblin. So for five double red sorcery, each player hides at least one object. Then all players reveal them what? simultaneously. Each player loses life equal to the number of objects he or she revealed. The player who revealed the fewest objects then loses half their life rounded up. If two or more players are tied for the fewest, each loses their life. Each loses their life rounded up. Half their life rounded up. What? Why? What? What, what would you hide? I, I don't magic cards. Your pencil or like a like a coin, a dice, coin? yeah, books or something. I don't know. That's so weird. Why do they have this stuff that you do outside the game? That it was something that was popular at the time for oh doing stuff gosh. like this. That is so strange. Is that an okay boomer card? Yeah, it's okay boomer. Okay All boomer. Right, so we're on yeah, we're on the last one here. This okay. is one of my favorite cards here. Scornful Egotist. He costs eight mana. Yeah. And he's only a 1-1. One, one. Nope. You, you, can, you can morph him for three and then flip him over for one blue. Why, so, but why would you do that, though? So he costs eight mana and is a 1-1. One, one. He's really... He seems really, really terrible, right? Yeah. Like, really terrible. So, this set, Scourge, I thought the same thing because I didn't play during Scourge here. I skipped this set. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I played... Um, like a set or two right before this one came out. Um, so when I saw this card years later, I'm like, why the hell did this card even exist? Mm -hmm. So this was a set where converted mana costs mattered. So there are some cards where you would want to play this as a morph and then flip it up. So it'd be the one, one. So you would have some cards that would, hey, draw cards equal to the highest converted mana costs you have out on the field. Oh. Or, or you'd have some burn cards that deal X damage where X equals your highest converted mana costs out oh, on the field. Oh, gotcha. Wow. So as, as you can tell, Wizards stopped doing that completely, pretty much. 
Yeah. But I, I mean, Morpheus is a thing that people like, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Morpheus is still good. It's just yeah. they, they kind of got away from converted mana cost matters a whole lot. Yeah. It, it was a fun little mechanic during the set, it seems like. But, yeah, when I first saw this card, I'm like, this is the worst card I've ever seen. <laughs> Until you see the other cards in the set. Well, Baltan says, don't get it too twisted, though. Egotist sucked back then, too. Oh, yeah, this would be more of draft chaff more than anything. It'd be something you'd want to play yeah. during booster and all that. I don't think this ever saw any kind of standard play or anything. Yeah. Or type e two, whatever. Even a 2-2 two, two creature for three is, like, not good. It doesn't do anything else. Yeah, I mean, well, that was the point of Morph where you don't know what they were playing right, until right, you flip right. it over. And, and yeah. then you saw this as a 1-1, one, one and you're like, oh, okay, this is crap. Yeah, like it's really bad. You should have just left it at 2-2. Two, two. Okay, boomer. All right, and that's it. Those are all the boomer cards. I'm going to go back to wow. my camera here. Wow. That was interesting. I mean, those are some weird cards. Hey, it's me. It's double me. Oh, okay. Hey, Zuby's back. back. Zuby's back. I'm back. It's, it's really interesting to see this old stuff that it was like, really, somebody thought of this? Oh, well, no, I, I kind of enjoyed, like, prepping for this because there there were a bunch of cards I did know. Like, I've, I've seen them before, but there were some cards, like, I'd never even seen before. Like, never heard yeah. of them. Like, wow, these are terrible. But yeah. there's, it's interesting to go back in the history and see the, the evolution of yes. where we are now. It's a very different now. That's oh for gosh, sure. Yeah. Very different. Those cards where it's, like, remove every card from this set. Yeah. What? Yeah, I, I don't... What if they yeah. reprinted a card like that now, and it was like, remove every card from Ikoria, Lair of Behemoth? R remove all Teferi cards from <gasps> your deck. Yes, that would be so good. <laughs> that would be so good. R remove all Soren cards from your deck. No. Nobody yeah. plays Soren anyways, okay? So it's not like he's even a threat. Poor Soren. I know what happened to Sorn Boy. There were there have been some good vampires though. We talked about one of we talked I think we talked yeah we talked about the Dusk Rose vampire and there was another one. It was an Orzov vampire from Corset Twenty One that we didn't talk about. Oh, uh, was but it was good. Yeah, yeah. I need to make an Orzov um aristocrats deck. Oh. Well, there you go. You have to look oh, it up. Oh, the Vampire Noble. At the beginning of your end step, if you gain three or more life this turn, each opponent loses. <gasps> Ooh, yes. Yes, we didn't really talk good. about that. It is good. What's it called? Uh Oh, shit. What was it? Um, Indulging Patrician. Pa oh, Indulging pa Patrician. Patrician, I guess? Sure, sure. Yeah, but it's a vampire, and it's good, and I love vampires, and I want vampires to be a thing, but they're just not, so. They can't, well, in EDH, they're really good. Yeah, I would like to build a vampire's EDH deck, but right now, I'm finishing up, I've got my cat's deck put together, but I, I would like to make a couple of tweaks to it, and I've got my rat's deck put together, but I would like to make a couple Ooh, of tweaks yeah, to it yeah. also. Oh, that's right, yeah, we played that, yeah. Yes, but, um... Yeah, vampires is kind of next on my list, so I really want to do that. Get I Edgar like Markov for your commander. Yes, yes. Edgar so Markov. good. You never ever have to cast him. I like that because he has eminence, just like yep. um, the cat commander. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. that, that's really nice. I like that ability. Yeah. So, yeah, that'll be my next deck for sure. Um, well, I think that about does it. Yeah, I, I do. I think that I think that does it for our episode tonight i you're right um yeah so we're just gonna wrap it up here i hope everybody enjoyed the episode tonight thank you all for hanging out with us yes, thank um you. we will be back in a, probably Three two weeks. weeks with another episode and hopefully yeah. we will see you all at the um corset 2021 early access event on yes. the 24th zuby and i will both be streaming so check it mm -hmm. out um, I'm going to try and find, wait, hold on a second. 
I'm going to try and find somebody to send us all over to. Ooh, that's right. That's Let's right. do oh, a raid. Let's see if Jana is Jana streaming. She is Jana and Sky Bills are streaming. Let's do it. I'm going to send you all over to um, Jana because I've sent you guys to Sky Bills the last couple of times. So let's go that's over. Great. Yeah, we have. Yeah, let's go see Jana. Everybody have a great night. Thank you all so much for watching. We love you. Yes, thank you. Bye. Yes. Have Bye. a great night. Bye. Did I do the raid? I don't know. Did it did it work? Oh, raid now. I'm clicking it. Bye. Bye.